This is a static rigid body problem. So we have a wall mounted light consisting of a rod AB as shown, mass 0 0.25 kilograms. I'll bring that back in a minute. We don't know where it's acting yet. Length 0 0.8, which is indicated on the diagram, freely hinged at a vertical wall. Okay, that is going to come back in. And a lamp of mass 0 0.5 kilograms is fixed at B. So let me add that on as a force 0.5 G. That is going to be the weight. System is held in equilibrium by a chain CD whose end C is attached to the midpoint of AB. Okay, that is shown, and that is going to give a tension to help keep it up. Then, what else do we have? The end D is fixed to a wall with a distance of 0.4 meters vertically above A, that's shown in the diagram, and the rod AB makes an angle of 60 degrees with a downward vertical, also shown. We're told to model the chain as a light and extensible string. The rod is modelled as uniform, so now I can bring in the weight. It's going to act exactly in the middle, 0.4 either side. So it's actually going to be 0.25 G here. I've dealt with that. The one thing I've not dealt with yet is the um, what is happening with the hinge. So there must be a force going to the right at the hinge because the only forces so far on the rod are the t uh, to the in horizontal direction is the tension so there must be something counteracting that if it's in equilibrium so i'm going to call this capital h there's going to be a horizontal component is that is that all there is well is there going to be a vertical component um okay this is a bit harder to see because there's two forces acting down there's one force acting up but if we just momentarily look at moments that are acting at C, then the 0.5G is going to try to turn the rod clockwise, but so is this horizontal force. So there must be something counteracting it, and that is going to be a vertical component at the hinge acting down. If you accidentally make it go up, you'll just find later on that it's negative. It's just, it might be a confusing thing. So now, if I've hopefully convinced you that it's definitely acting down because because we have to so I know there's H because the forces have to be balanced and I know there's V because the moments have to be balanced everywhere so we're asked to take moments at A or about A so um, a moment is given by the force that is perpendicular to what it's acting on, so it's the components going, say, this direction, multiplied by the distance. So the moment is F times D, basically. We're doing about A, so there is no component from the hinge here because they are zero meters from the hinge, so we managed to eliminate them. Let's take a look at the weights to start with then. 0.25g now this angle is okay that isn't actually going to be 60 i think what i'm going to do is use this angle which is 60 and if i extend this that angle is also 60. i feel like this is just a little bit easier you could uh, if you draw this in now you can see actually that that is 30 so if you want to use 30 degrees instead it's fine you'll just use sine when you should use cos or vice versa so take moments about a all right, I'm going to first of all look at the 0.25 G. So the force is 0.25 G, but I need to look at the component. If I draw this out, okay, the quick thing to see is that it is, it's, I want the one that's not going towards the angle, so it's going to be sine. It's going to be 0.25 G sine 60. Or if you drew it in here, it would be cos 30. Let me convince you of that using my diagram so it's going to be going that way so i could split the force into a component going this way and this way there's my theta so you can see i'm dealing with the opposite that's what i'm trying to find that's why it's 0.25 g sine 60. don't forget to also multiply by the distance like we said before that's actually to be honest the main mistake i make in these questions i'd normally realize it at a later point but yeah we're dealing with the moment so it's going to be that times 0.4 and then I'm going to get another clockwise moment. So it's going to be 0.5 G. Again, sine 60 for the same reasons. 
times by 0 0.8. And that is going to equal the anti-clockwise moment from the tension. So it's going to be, OK, I need to think about the component of the tension now. I don't have an angle at the moment, but I can see that this is going to be 120 degrees because I've got a straight line. And this is an isosceles triangle. That length is the same as that length. So that must be 30 and that must be 30. So I could now draw another triangle or, or I could say, right, it's, again, it's not towards the angle, so it's going to be sine 30. I'm red. Multiplied again by 0 0.4. Okay, if you want to see the a little diagram. And I've got the tension acting this way. There's a rod this way. So I want, this is my 30 degrees. I want this bit here, so I want the opposite. Now we're ready to calculate T. There are a couple of shortcuts we can use, actually. If we divide through by 0.4, then this will go, this will go, and this will become 2. Um, and sine 30 is actually a half, so I could just times through by 2, essentially, or divide through by sine 30, and then this 0.5 is going to go. When I divide by 0 0.25, I'm going to be left with 0 0.5. So that's just a much quicker calculation at this point. Okay, if you don't spot that or don't like the idea of doing that, then no problem whatsoever. Just make sure you, you carefully put it in your calculator. So 0 0.5 G. Times sine 60. And we get, we get an exact answer, but 21.217. Or 21.2 newtons. Okay, good start here. Now we're asked to determine the magnitude and direction of the force exerted on the rod at A. So this hinge force that I talked about. So you might have done the problem so far without even have considered it. I think it is good to consider at the start, personally. Um, and it is also a really good shout, in, I think, to look at it horizontally and vertically, okay? Because we can deal with those and we don't need to work, we don't need to worry about some sort of force at an angle and work in terms of cos and sines. Let's just get H and V and then we'll put it back together. So I'm going to sort of do this all in one go. I'm going to find the horizontal component first. So I can resolve horizontally and it must be that h is equal to the horizontal component of the tension. Now yeah this is where this problem is a little bit tricky because we've dealt with the tension, the ver um, the component perpendicular to the to the rod and now we need to sort of think about a different triangle for how to split the tension. So what we could do is draw a triangle like this. Um, and actually, that is also going to be 30 degrees. Or you could use the 60 degrees here. I think I'm going to use the 30. So if I want the component to the horizontal, it's opposite. So it's actually going to be T sine 30. And therefore, I'm going to get a half of that 217 and actually, this is one I've done earlier. I'm not going to put that in my calculator. It's going to be 10.608. Right, now, the vertical. Resolving. Let's resolve down. So V plus the two weights, that's going to be 0.75G, is going to equal T cos 30. Okay, the other one, the one that's like the adjacent of this green triangle. And then V ends up being, you have to minus the 0.75G 
and we get 11.0244. Okay, we're in, in good shape now. So I can draw a little force triangle. Okay, I've got my vertical component and I've got my horizontal component. So overall, there's going to be this for my force at the hinge. Ten point six zero eight. Um, and then this can be my angle. So if I want the the magnitude, then it's going to be ten point six zero eight squared plus eleven point zero two four squared. All square rooted, which ends up being 15.299 or 15.3 newtons. Well done if you got that. And then for the direction, I can do tan theta. Is the opposite 10.608 all over 11.024 and do inverse tan. Forty three point eight nine eight. So I could say um, forty three point nine degrees from the vertical. In fact, when I did this originally, I don't know why I drew my triangle like that. So you, you could draw your triangle slightly differently. We could go along and down and then work out this angle and it'd be it'd be a 90 minus that 43.898, which would be 46.1 degrees below the horizontal or yeah, below the horizontal. So either of these should be okay as long as you kind of get the angle and then specify what you're comparing it to. It doesn't it doesn't specify that you have to use the horizontal or the vertical. Finally, suggest one improvement that could be made to the model to make it more realistic. I went with give the lamp dimensions because we're modeling it as a particle. Some other options would be to consider the weight of the chain, model the rod as non-uniform, have friction at the hinge, more accurate value of G. There's other answers as well, but those are just some to consider. Okay, thanks for watching this. I hope it's helped. Keep going.